let's stand as we read the word of God this morning. We are still in a message compilation entitled Cover. Look at your neighbor and say cover. Covered. Come on, say it louder, say cover. And the reason why we are calling it covered is because I believe by the Spirit of God that He wants to make sure that our lives are covered concerning our relationships, concerning how we deal with people. Because people aren't just people who are, people aren't just things that are expendable. People aren't just things that uh, we call we need them. People can be also can also be boundaries. They can be things that help us. They can be things that pray for us. So make sure that you have relationships such as mentors. Uh, we talked about friendships, and we also talked about having somebody to pour into. And this week we're going to talk about a very important person that um, that is very special to you, whether you think so or not. And the Bible says in Proverbs twenty, verse five, the Bible says, "Counsel in the heart of a man." Is like deep water. Let me read that one more time. Counsel in the heart of a man is like deep water. Watch me. But a man of understanding will draw it out. I'm going to read that again. Counsel in the heart of a man is like deep water. Now, if you do your due diligence and you study this in the Hebrew, that word counsel means purpose. In the original King James, uh, that, that word is purpose. Purpose in the heart of a man is like deep water. But a man of understanding will draw it out. I want to ask a very simple question this morning. This is a question that I need you to ask yourself when you wake up out the bed. This is a question that I need you to ask yourself on the way to work. This is a question that I need you to ask yourself before you make a decision. This is a question that I need you to ask yourself before you respond to something. This is a question I need you to ask yourself when you feel like things are going haywire. I need you to ask yourself this very pivotal question at least two to three times a week. Here it is. Here's the title. How am I? How am I? I want you to say it out, say it out loud. Say how, how am, am I? I? How am I? How am I? Father God, we thank you for this sermon. Speak through me. Say exactly what you need to say. In the name of Jesus, we all say amen. amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let me ask you all a question. You probably saw it on my Instagram as I was preparing. Uh, I put a question on, um, on my Instagram. But I'm going to ask you here. Um, selfishness. Selfishness. Let me ask you all a question. Is selfishness always a bad thing? No. Kim, how come selfishness isn't always a bad thing? Okay, Drew, why self, how come selfishness isn't always a bad thing? Uh, because certain situations require you to put yourself first. Mm. Okay, okay. Um, Julie, how come selfishness isn't always a bad thing? Same thing he said. Same thing he said. <laughs> you got a new answer? Gabby, how come selfishness isn't always a bad thing? Um, prioritizing like, your health and your physical well being is more important. You can't take care of somebody else, you can't take care of yourself. Okay, all right. I agree with all those answers, but let me ask you this. Um, how many people of us know people who are selfish in a negative sense? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, all right. So, 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 so based on that, we can, we can honestly say that selfishness isn't always bad depending on the definition and context yeah. of how you use it, right? So, so let me give you scenarios, and you correct me if I'm wrong. It's selfish to take credit for a group project but it's not selfish to take a break from the preparation to produce that project. Is that right or wrong? Right. That's right, okay. It's selfish to go out and get yourself something to eat and not call and check and see if your family has eaten, then come back and eat your food in front of your family. That's selfish, right? But it's not selfish. Y'all laugh because some of y'all do that. But it's not selfish it's not selfish to take time for yourself to go out to eat by yourself after you make sure that your family is straight. Right, right, okay, okay, okay. Let me, let me, let me phrase it like this. It's selfish to always make everything about you, but it's not selfish to put yourself before some things. And the reason why I want to use selfishness as a framework, because most people, they use selfishness against selflessness. Everybody say selflessness. selflessness. Now, 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 here's the deal. Here's the deal. 
There's nothing wrong with being selfless. The Bible encourages us to be selfless. But, but here's the deal. What if my selfishness improves my selflessness? What if my selfishness improves my selflessness? What does that mean? Because in order to be selfless, that implies that I have to give up something for somebody else, right or wrong. But, 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 here, but here's the situation. How can I give to Julie if I haven't given anything to myself? How can I pour out to you if I have not poured into my own soul? Now let me be very clear. In the spirit you are already filled. In the spirit you have everything that pertains to life and godliness. But I'm talking about in your mind, your will, and your emotions. I'm talking about in your soul is real. Because you are a spirit, you have a soul, and you live in a body. Everybody say, I am a spirit. I have a soul. And I live in a body. I'm going to say it one more time. Say, I am a spirit. So if I am a spirit, then that means the spirit of God living vigorous on the inside of me. Everything that belongs to Jesus, it belongs to me. If Jesus is healed, then I'm healed. If Jesus has peace, then I have peace. If Jesus is blessed, then I'm blessed. Whatever happens to Jesus, it has to happen to you. Amen. Thank you for that one amen. If it happens to Jesus, it happened to you. So stop walking around saying I'm broken when Jesus is healed. Stop walking around saying I'm anxious when Jesus has peace. Now watch me. Now even though you have been healed in the spirit, there's another area in your life called your soul. Everybody say your soul. Your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. Let me be very clear. I like to refer to the soul as the gray area. Because the Bible says being transformed by the renewing of your mind. Let me be very clear. Your spirit is renewed, but your soul is being renewed or renewing every single day. Your spirit is already healed, but your mind is experiencing the healing that your spirit has already, ta has already taken place day by day. So what that looks like is Jesus came inside of you and healed the spirit, but you have to change your soul into who Jesus has already made you. Does that make sense? Yeah. So here's the reality. While your spirit is already healed, your soul needs to check up. And, and one of the ways, <clears throat> one of the ways that we check up on our souls is by doing a self-assessment. How many people say the phrase, how are you, at least once a day? Yes, all the time. All the time, okay. All the time, right? Everybody say all the time? All the time. Everybody say, everybody, you agree with that, right? All the time? Yeah. Well, let me ask you this. How often do you say, how am I? Sometimes. Sometimes. Rare. It's rare. Somebody said all the time. Said, so, that's, so that's one person out of everybody saying, no, nah, not really. But here's my, here, here's, here's my question. Why is it that we love saying, how are you? Or maybe it's just habit. Maybe it's a habit of, we love to say, how are you? But we rarely say, how am I? Because watch me, here we go. We have been taught that it's unbiblical to check up on our own selves. Because let me be very clear. While it is biblical, to serve, it's also biblical to put yourself as a servant in serving yourself as well. What, is, what does that mean? Let me, let me be very clear. Just because you're called to be a servant to other people doesn't mean that you're not worthy of being served as well. Amen. Okay, let me, let, me, let me bring this even closer to home. There are moments where even Jesus was selfish. Oh, yeah, why? Now remember, it's all about the definition of selfish. Jesus, and the Bible says this in Luke 5 verse 16, that Jesus always went away to pray. Jesus was always doing ministry with the crowds. But the Bible says he went away often to pray. Watch me. Jesus understood that in order for him to give of himself, he had to take care of himself. Why? Because Jesus in the flesh is different from Jesus in the spirit. Jesus in the spirit doesn't need a meal, but Jesus in the flesh has to eat. Okay, okay, okay. Jesus in the flesh is fully man, but he's fully God. Okay? 
Jesus in the spirit does not need to go to sleep. But Jesus as a man, he experiences the, 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 uh, the, the, sin, the sin that's in the world, which makes us tired, which makes us hungry, which makes us, us, us think about certain things. So Jesus, even though he was fully God, Jesus never sinned. Jesus in the flesh, he had to experience certain things. So even though Jesus was fully God, with him being in the flesh, sometimes Jesus would get tired. Does that make sense? Yeah. So watch me. So if Jesus had to get away and pray, what makes you think you don't have to? If Jesus had to take a break from the crowd, what makes you think you can't take a break from your assignment? Jesus understood the purpose of soul care. And today, very quickly, we're not going to be here long. I just want you to learn how to ask yourself every single day one question. How am I? Every morning you wake up, how am I? Before, watch me, before you text anybody, how am I? How am I? What's going on with me? How am I doing? And the problem is, for some of us, we have been taught, oh, you should always put others first. And listen, I agree with that. But let me be very clear. How can you serve others if you're always putting yourself last? There has to come a time where you have to put yourself before the needs of everybody else. Now watch me. Now I'm not telling you to become self-centered. I just want to make sure that you are centered in Christ so that you can put everybody else in their proper position. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, we got to go. Watch me. So listen, the Bible says in Proverbs 20 verse 5, I want you to highlight the scripture. Counsel in the heart of a man is like deep water. There's this documentary that me and my wife watched on uh, Netflix last night. We fell asleep watching it. But um, it's called The Deepest Breath. Anybody ever seen it? You seen it, bro? It's called, it's called The Deepest Breath. And what it is, it's about uh, these two people. They participated in this sport called uh, free diving. Anybody ever heard of that, free diving? Okay, free diving is a sport that most African Americans don't participate in. <laughs> be honest. It's a sport that most African Americans don't participate in. It's a sport where you have these people, they jump in the water, and y'all, when I tell you, Kim, they go to the deepest of the deep in the sea. I'm talking about like they go like, where it's like pitch black. It's pitch black. When I, like, if, if, if you go home, just go home and watch the first 10 minutes. That's all I want you to do, watch the first 10 minutes. Just watch how long they die. They go deep in the water, like deep, to the point to where if you don't get back up in a certain amount of time, then the pressure of the water will kill you. Like they go deep, right in my lion. They go deep in the water. Like me and my wife were literally getting scared watching that camera go all the way down. I'm talking about, I didn't even know the sea was that deep, y'all. I'm not trying to be funny. I didn't know the sea was that deep. It's like, yo, where are you going? They were, she was going deeper, deeper, and deeper. The Bible says that counsel in the heart of a man is like deep water. And I began to think about that as I was preparing for this message. Counsel in the heart of a man is like deep water. And that word counsel means purpose. That means purpose on the inside of you. It's like deep water. Let me tell you this. There is nothing shallow about you. There is nothing simple about you. The Bible says that purpose is in you like deep water. So there's something deep on the inside of you. Watch me. Whatever you need. If the Bible says in Peter that God has already given us everything that pertains to life and godliness, then that means that deep on the inside of us, that whatever you need is on, is on the inside of you. But the next part of the scripture, it says this, but a man of understanding will draw it out. And I begin to ask the Holy Spirit, what does that mean? If, 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 purpose, if purpose is in me and if purpose is in my heart like deep water, and, and if a man that has understanding, if he can draw it out, then, then, then what does that mean? That means that, watch me, that everything you need is on the inside of you. But watch me. But you have to understand who you are in the sight of God. You have to understand who you are as a human. You have to understand where you are in order to draw the answer that the Holy Spirit is already giving you. Let me be very clear. You don't like answers. Amen. You don't like solutions. You don't lack anything. So watch me. When somebody says, I'm confused about this, here's the reality. The answer is already in the, on the inside of you. But the question is, have you taken the time to self-assess, to pull it out? Because the problem is, we spend so much time worrying about the problem rather than sitting down, self-assessing ourselves to pull the answer out. That's right. Or we say, 
say stuff like, God, you ain't spoken to me. No, 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 no. God is speaking, but you're listening to doubt more than you're listening to him. That's right. That's good. So watch me. So there are three areas, rather there are three questions that I want you to ask yourself every single day. I want you to write these things down. We're going to school today. I want you to write these things down. There's three questions that I want you to ask every single day. Are you ready to get the first one? Number one, what do I believe? I want you to ask yourself that question every single time you get a chance. What do I believe? The Bible says in Proverbs 23, verse 7, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. I want you to examine your, your world right now. I want you to examine your relationship. I want you to examine your job. I want you to examine everything. I want you to examine how you see it. Let me be, let me be very clear. However you see a thing, that's not God's problem. That's yours. I'm going to say it again. However you see people, however you see your calling, however you see your assignment, that is not God's problem. That's yours. That is your problem. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. And watch me. Some of us, we have bad belief systems that we have never challenged. Some of us, our belief system came from a cousin. It came from a grandma. It came from an auntie. Some of us, your belief system is that you'll never make a certain amount of money. Some of you, you have believed that your health will only be at a certain level because everybody in your family has this disease. Can I tell you something? Whatever you believe about yourself, if it is contrary to what God has already spoken about you, then you are walking in lies that Satan has said to you. Yeah, that's good. You only got two ways to go. Either you're going to walk in what God already said about you, or you're going to be walking in the lies that Satan said to you. You got to pick one. The Bible says, choose this day, life and death. So you either got to pick whether you're going to walk in life or you're going to walk in death. Which one? Because let me be very clear. I need to put this somewhere uh, in, in, in this church, Drew. Just somewhere. I need to put it on a big, big mantle because I say it all the time. You will never live above your belief system. That's right. Never. Whatever you believe, that's what you're going to say. Mm -hmm. Period. It's almost like a prison. Watch me. And when somebody gets sentenced to life, they ain't going nowhere. Your belief system, shit. Your belief system is your own sentence. Wherever you have assigned your head, that's where you're going to live. If you're going to live in the prison of prosperity, you can stay there all you want to. But if you're going to live, if you're going to live in the prison of doubt, you'll stay there. And watch me. Listen to me. And it's not God's job to bring you out. The Bible says, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Right. you got to renew it. You have to renew it. That's right. Whatever you believe, that's what you believe. God has already spoken everything he's going to say. Let me be very clear. God is not going to change what he's already declared about you. It's not going to change it. The question is, are you declaring something different than what he's already declared? Which leads me to my next question. So the first question you need to ask yourself weekly, what do I believe about myself? The next one. Are you ready for this one? Ask yourself this question today when you get home. How am I talking to myself? How am I talking to myself? I need you to think about that right now. How am I talking to myself? I'm good, bro. Don't even worry about it. How am I talking to myself? Can y'all hear me? Yeah. How am I talking to myself? That's the question you need to ask yourself today. The Bible says in Proverbs 18, verse 21, that death and life are in the what? Death and life are in the what? Death and life are not in your hands. Death and life is in the power of the what? Uh -huh. So let me ask you this. Watch me. Either you can speak life or you can speak death, my question to you is, what do you speak on a regular basis? What do you speak on a regular basis? Now, I want you to think. I want you to think. Because it's easy for most of us to say, oh, I speak life. But what happens when you're on the highway and somebody cuts you off? What you speak then? Yeah, yeah, I know. I, I see, 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 it's easy in church to tell me the right answer. But let me evaluate your life. What happens when somebody says something you don't like? Do you speak like them? Now, I'm being honest with you. I, I know I don't all the time. I, I, I'm, I'm going to be straight up with you. Sometimes I do not be speaking like when I feel disrespected and when I feel wrong or when something happens. But the reality is you have to always remember this, that your words get to your future before you do. Let me, let, let me help you out. 
Let me help you out. And I need you to be honest today. I need you to really be honest. And I've been here before, and sometimes I'm still here. Let's just be real today. How many people have ever, or let me, let me rephrase it. How many people don't like their job right now? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Okay, cool. How many people, how many people don't like a particular relationship with a family member or a cousin or a friend? How many people? Okay. Yeah. All right, cool. All right. Let me deal with the people who go to work first. I wonder, and this is something I had to learn, and I'm still learning. I wonder if it's the job that's frustrating or is it the conversation that you have about the job before you walk into it. I'm not negating that the job isn't hard. I'm not negating that the job isn't frustrating. What I'm negating is that just because it's hard, that doesn't mean that my conversation about it has to agree with the hardness that I experience. Because one of the things that I had to learn in the last season of me working six days a week, and my wife can attest to this, there were days when I would come home and she would ask me, how was your day? And I would say, it was fine. Or I would say, it was good. But watch me. Tease, it wasn't fine or good. Because I was like, get me the hell out of here. I was like, get me out of here now. Now, for some of y'all who think hell is a cuss word, I apologize. <laughs> But, but I, I'm just being real. I was like, get me out of here. But what I had to learn was that in order for me to have the stamina to endure that season, my conversation about that season had to change. Amen. Because the problem is some of us, you agree with things and you walk in agreement with something that God is trying to use to teach you something. So instead of saying, I hate my job, what if you start saying, I'm grateful for my job? Yeah. Because the reality is, you might not like it, but you could be unemployed. I'm telling you something that I'm learning, and I'm still learning. The reality is, you might not like where you are, but it's better than being out on the street. It's better than not having anything. There are times, y'all, you might not like that cousin. You might not like that friend. You might not like your spouse. That's just going to be real. But what is the conversation that you have around your spouse before you encounter them? When's the last time you spoke about your girlfriend or your boyfriend or your cousin or your spouse? When's the last time you said, you know what? God, I thank you that our relationship is getting better. The problem is some of us, you have settled in your own perception of what that person is. So if that person is aggravating, they're going to be aggravating to you forever. Yeah. Think about it. Like, 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 like legit. Like, if your spouse is getting on your nerves and you constantly say that, you're going to constantly walk that out. You're going to constantly walk that out. Me and my wife have been through one of the hardest seasons in our marriage in the last two to three months. And we had to have conversation to where, listen, we're not going to say things about one another that we don't agree with. If God didn't say it, then I'm not going to say it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to affirm what God has already said about you. Because the reality is, watch me, and it goes back to your own self. What are the conversations that you're having about yourself? Because the most important conversation is not the one that you have with the Lord. It's the one that you have with yourself. I'm going to repeat it. The most important conversation is not the one that you have with God. It's the one that you have yourself. If God already called you holy, but you keep calling yourself nasty, guess which one you're going to agree with? This one. Because you keep calling yourself unholy. You keep calling yourself broken. Watch me. The Bible says faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Stay with me. That principle is still there. Faith coming by hearing. If you're constantly feeding yourself doubt instead of feeding yourself faith, then you're going to walk in doubt. But if you constantly renew your mind to what God has said about you, then you're going to walk in the things that God has said about you. If God called you healed and you call yourself healed, then you're healed. If God called you holy and you call yourself holy, then you're holy. If God called you full of peace and you call yourself full of peace, you'll walk it out. But if you keep calling yourself broken, you keep calling yourself damaged, you keep calling yourself hurt, then that's what you're going to walk out. And it has nothing to do with God. God loves you so much that he'll let you be broke. What does that mean, Pastor Kane? Because God gave you a free will. God don't want robots. If you want to be broke, that's on you. If you want to stay stuck, that's on you. Man, you know
know what? You know what? I had to learn this to, to, to like change my mind on. Man, God just has me here, and He's not allowing me to move. Listen, let me be very clear. Uh -uh. God's not holding you nowhere. Now, if He's telling you He wants you to stay in a certain place, He just wants you to be obedient and He wants you to be surrendered. But God ain't gonna hold nobody hostage. He's not holding you hostage. And let me clear this up as well, because I had a conversation with somebody this past week, and they said, God is holding my husband back. No, he ain't. God ain't holding your husband back. God ain't holding your husband back. God ain't holding your wife back. He ain't doing that. Listen, God don't play games. And you know what we think? If I learn how to cook, then they'll come. No, that's not how, listen, that's not how it works. That's not how life works. Or if I just fast and then appear. No, that's just, listen, you baby, you need to go eat. <laughs> you ain't doing nothing starving yourself. That's not how life works. That's not how life works. Because watch me. The reason why we perform is because we don't trust in our identity that God has already given us. Amen. So what we try to do is, watch me, because I don't, because I don't self-assess myself and because things are not happening in my life, I'm always feeling anxious. I'm always feeling tired. Because I don't take time and ask myself the right questions, what you will do is you will begin to uh, you will begin to perform because you are now assuming how God feels about you. When you don't know the will of God, you will make up your own will. You don't know if it's the will of God for you to be blessed. You don't know that it's the will of God for you to walk in holiness. When you don't know that, when you have not settled that within yourself, then watch me. What you will do is you will try to perform to get God to move when God has already moved in your life. Amen. That's good. Do you hear what I'm telling you today? Stay with me. Here's the last question I need you to understand. So I need you to ask yourself, what do I believe? Ask yourself, how am I talking about myself? And then here's the last one. Watch me. How am I treating myself? How am I treating myself? The Bible says, this is the, the psalmist David. He wrote this. Psalm 42, verse 11. Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you disquieted, disquieted within me? Hope in God. For I shall yet praise him, the yelp, the help of my countenance and my God. I'll read it one more time. Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him, the help of my countenance and my God. I love this because David, he questions his own soul. He doesn't just go through habit. He doesn't just go through life. He doesn't just go through, oh, well, if I feel bad today, I feel bad today. Well, if I'm angry today, I feel angry today. Well, I'm anxious today, I'm going to be anxious today. No, he looks at himself and he says, so why are you disquieted? Can I tell you something? You have authority over your own emotions. You have authority over your own mind. And let me free you this morning. Stop blaming the devil for how you think. Because let me be very clear. Everything in your life is not an attack of the enemy. Does the enemy attack you? Yes. He does. That's what he does. The Bible says Satan come to steal, kill, and destroy. Satan can't attack you. But everything ain't the devil. Some things that we deal with are just negative patterns that we have created. Now Satan might have planted the seed, but you grew it. You have authority over how you think. You have authority over how you feel. This is something that I am still learning, y'all, because sometimes I will wake up in the morning because my babies have slept in the bed with me, and I am frustrated because they don't know how to get out the bed. I'll put them in the bed, they get back in the bed, and I wake up and my back is sore because Cairo's knees is in my back, and I am tired and I'm frustrated, and I don't feel like doing nothing that day, but I have to go upstairs, and I got to shake it off, and I got to keep moving because the reality is a bad day is not a bad day. It's just based on your bad thinking. Good. Um, that's real good. I want to challenge. I'm, I'm, the next time, oh, you know, let, let's do this. How many, how many people have had a bad day recently? Like, like you said, man, this is a bad day. Raise your hand if you had a bad day recently. Okay, let me ask you this. I want you to go back in your mind right now and think about that day. I want you to think about how you were thinking during that bad day. Most likely, you kept meditating. Dang, this is a bad day. And things just got worse. I'm going to tell you what, how I. <laughs> It's weird. It's so weird. But anybody ever like stub their toe? Yeah. Yes. When I did that in the morning, I used to say, uh-oh. <laughs> I don't know why I did it. And it, it's so unbiblical. <laughs> like, what the heck? But and when I used to stub my toe, and 
me tell you something. For some reason, when you stub your toe, that's worse than any type of pain. Because you listen, you stub your toe, you feel that in your in your arm, you feel that in your ear. Like, man, that just hurt. And I used to say, uh-oh. And then I would never forget when the Holy Spirit spoke to me. I never I was in college. I hit my toe one day and I said, uh-oh. And the Holy Spirit said to me clearly, that's just a moment. Get over it. That's just a moment. Get over it. I challenge you and challenge your perspective. What if, what if, what if it's not that you have bad days, you just had a bad moment that you allowed to become a bad day? Because a bad moment can turn into a good, good moment in the next 10 seconds. So it's not that you had a bad day, you just had a bad moment and you allowed that moment to expand. You have to ask yourself, okay, why do I think this way? Why do I believe this way? And then when it comes to treating yourself, ask yourself, why am I treating myself this way? Why am I in this relationship if I know it's not healthy? Here we go. This is something that Pastor Canaan is dealing with right now. Why are you still eating this way? Why are you still eating this way constantly? Why aren't you drinking more water? Why do you still go here and you don't like nobody that's here? No, 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 for real. Like, 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 like ask yourself, why are you treating yourself? I, and listen, I don't know what it is. Why do I still have this bad habit? Like, 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 question it. Like, listen, you have authority over your life. You submit to God. But when you submit to God, he's already giving you the authority. Everything that you need that pertains to life and godliness, you already have it. Don't ever ask God for peace when he already gave it to you. Don't ever ask God for joy. He already gave it to you. You don't listen to me. You don't have to ask God to heal you. He already healed you. The question is, do you have the understanding of the word of God to draw it out of you? So what do you believe about yourself? That's the first question. How are you talking to yourself? Second question. Third question, how are you treating yourself? Those are three questions you need to ask yourself weekly. Last thing, we go home, I promise you. Three ways to build a relationship with yourself, to build a relationship with yourself, three things. Number one, write this down. You have to be honest with yourself. You have to be very honest with yourself. I'm still honest with myself. I've been going to therapy lately and it's been blessing me, but for years I did not want to go. Just didn't want to go. Because I felt like just because I, because I was a leader, because of certain things, I was like, I'm not going to bump all that. Listen, if you need to go and talk to somebody, go talk to somebody. You need to go to somebody who is a professional and knows how to like get the answers out of you. It has been a tremendous blessing to me. But you need to be honest with yourself. Jesus said the truth will set you free. Some of us, some of you, it's almost like you don't even want to be by yourself because... You have to deal with certain things that you don't want to think about. Yeah. You got to be honest with yourself. Be honest. Be honest with how you think. Some of you need to go home today, go home today, and just be honest and say, I don't like you. Just look in the mirror. I don't like you. Just be, you got to start somewhere. You got to start somewhere. Just say, I don't like you. And then watch me. And then you need to not only apologize to yourself, apologize to the Lord. Because after you confront it, now you need to deal with the dishonor that's in it. Because God made you fearfully and wonderfully. The Bible says you are fearfully and wonderfully made. But you got to start somewhere. Be honest with yourself. Be honest with your flaws. Be honest with them. Like, dang, I don't, I don't, I don't like this. I don't like this. Because the problem is you keep skating over it and you wonder why you keep tripping over it. Be honest with yourself. Here's the next thing. Learn to get away by yourself. Notice, I didn't say get away with other people. Learn to get away by yourself. The Bible says that Jesus retreated often. Luke 5 verse 16. It's all through the scriptures. Jesus understood that I need to get away by myself with my father. I need to get away. You know, for some of us, the only reason you like hanging around people is because you don't want to be by yourself because when you start to be by yourself, you start to actually think about what's going on in your own life. That's why you always ask them, do you want to go out to eat with somebody? That's why you always got to have somebody around you. That's why you always on the phone. That's why you always on Instagram. You always got to give your attention to something else. No, you need to give attention to yourself. Get away by yourself. Go on vacation by yourself. Not to post it in the flex. Get on it. Get, get on a vacation so that you can actually sit back and think with nobody else around you. Go by yourself. 
Get away by yourself. Here's the last one. We're going home. You have to learn. You have to learn how to consistently receive and be conscious of how God sees you. You have to consciously receive and constantly and be consistent in reading and renewing your mind on how God sees you. Because here's the reality. The only reason why you don't see yourself properly is because you don't see God properly. It's flat out. Flat out. However you see yourself, that's how you see God. If you see yourself as broken, it's because you think God sees you broken. If you see yourself damaged, it's because you think God, listen, God is, this is how I used to see God. That's how I used to see God. I used to see God as this rule master with this, this very long beard that was waiting for me to fail. That's not God. It's not God. The Bible says in 1 John 4, verse 17, that as he is, so are you in this world. As he is, as who, as Jesus is. If Jesus is blessed, then that's how God sees you. If Jesus has peace, that's how God sees you. If Jesus is whole, that's how God sees you. The question is not how God sees you. It's how do you see yourself. But first off, you have to learn how God sees you so that you can see yourself properly. That's why, listen to me, you have to spend more time than this. You have to spend more time than this. I don't know when, but I'm going to do a sermon on, it's going to be very simple. I might do a series or a sermon on why you can trust the Bible. On why you can trust the Bible. Because we live in a generation that goes on Instagram for answers. You go on TikTok, oh my, listen, listen. I know this might sound old school, but listen, bro. There are people who are paid to tell you stupid stuff. That's what they do. They get on there and they bash the Bible because they know it's going to get me views because that's how they live. But every answer is in this book. You just got to know how to read it. Listen, I'm going to tell you something. The Bible is full of amazing stories. Man, is this one story? This is one story of this prophet. He's a bald headed prophet. Maybe Elisha. Bald headed prophet. These kids was like picking up his bald head. And the prophet was like, hey, bear, come out and eat him. And the bear ate him. <laughs> it's like, whoa, this is God's deal. <laughs> His stories are like, 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 I'm like, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you, listen, if, if when God opens the door, I'm gonna make this movie. I'm gonna make this movie. It's about this cat in the Bible, this dude, this, this dude in the Bible. His name was David, and he was a king. And one day he was supposed to be at war. And then one day, dog, my man saw this girl, like, across the way. Her name was Beersheba. She must have been bad. Because he told his servant, hey, go get her and bring her here. So they got him bring her, bring Brock and brought her there. So, you know, he did what he did with her, you know what I'm saying? He wooed her, he gave her a couple of, you know, whatever. He did what he did with her. And then homegirl got pregnant. Homegirl got pregnant. And let me tell you how much of a savvy David was. David was like, hey, go find our homegirl husband and bring her here. Bring him here. And then the husband comes and he's super excited because he finally gets to meet the king and he's so loyal. And watch me, he even runs, his name was you right, he even runs to meet the king early who was David. He sleeps out on the gate like this is a good dude. It's a good dude, man, good dude. And then guess what happens? David puts Uriah on the front line of the army and gets him killed. He kills the baby mama's husband. It's good stories in the Bible, man. It's good stories in the Bible, man. It's good stories. I'm telling you, man, it's good stories. It's good stories in the Bible. For real, man, it's a good story. I'm going to tell you the greatest story, though. I'm tell you the greatest story. Yo, there's this cat who nobody had heard of. They heard, like, prophecies about him. And this dude, like, he comes down, and we only know, like, three years of his life. And this man, like, he casts out devils. He does miracles. He lays hands on the sick. He watches people recover. I mean, he, like, he really loves when people. And you know what the amazing thing did? The amazing thing is, one day, this guy, he dies for a bunch of people who didn't deserve it. For a bunch of people who didn't deserve it. And you want to know the wild thing is? On the third day, he got back up. <laughs> Wait a minute. Hold on. I mean, I can get the homeboy died. 
But he got back up. You want to know the crazy part? You want to know the crazy part? You're the villain in that story. And the hero died for the villain. So that you could become a hero as well. That's the gospel. You see, all that type of stuff is in the Bible. You can trust the Bible. You can trust the Bible. And we might have to do like a Bible study on it. But listen, the only way you're going to see yourself as God sees you is when you soak yourself in the Word of God. Amen. It's when you soak yourself in the Scripture. Let me be very clear. However you think now, you got it from somewhere. I need you to think about what I just said. What, however you think about yourself now, you got it from somewhere. Nobody in here, you just didn't grow up and uh, uh, this is what I think about. No. You heard it from somewhere. You got it from somewhere. Somebody told it to you. You either memorized it and became a part of your thought process. However you think, you got it from somewhere. In order for you to be successful and do what God is calling you to do, you have to saturate your mind in who God has called you to be. Let's step up and go on.